Hello and welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today we're going to start part two of our series on five fantastic ways to use distress oxides. And we're going to do this video by just making six more cards using different techniques. So I want to do these techniques on colored paper because that's the one fun thing about distress oxides. You do not have to just use it on white. You can use it on any color paper, craft, black, gray, whatever color. With distress inks, you are always kind of tied down to white. So the first techniques we're going to do is we're going to be doing it with stencils. So I have two wonderful stencils, one by Tim Holtz and one by Hero Arts. And we're going to do some stenciling on some cardstock. So when I do stenciling, I always put some tape behind my panel and then tape my stencil down on top. That way I don't have any tape lines that are going to affect my stenciling at all. Because the last thing you have to want to do is try to fill in an area that has a tape mark across the corner. And this way it holds it down both the paper and the stencil for me just fine. So I'm going to start with some wilted violet. Actually, wait a minute. No, I'm going to start with worn lipstick. Because usually the best way is to go lightest to darkest. So we are going to just go along there diagonally across this beautiful, this is the burlap stencil by Tim Holtz. And now I'm going to go into fabric. Now I want to show you a little trick I do with my inks. I have little clear sticky Velcro and I stick the rough edge on the top of my thing and then stick my little sponge on top. That way I always have the right color sponge on top of my pad. I do this in the back of my Distress inks also. So that way I always have my pads close by. And now I'm going to come in with the Wilted Violet. So this panel had one lipstick, Wilted Violet, and Fired Brick in it. Very warm colors for this beautiful craft colored card stock panel that I just made. And as you see, you can see these colors quite vibrantly on this panel. And that is because the distress oxides do not sink into the paper. They sit on top because they have that pigment quality to it. And I am also going to add some water to this just to get that fun droplet effect. And then I'm going to heat set it so that the colors will dry. And you see, you still get those milky little dots in it too, which is really fun. Now for the next panel, I'm going to do the same thing to start. I'm going to put a little loop of tape behind it, stick it to my glass mat, and then stick this beautiful stencil. This stencil is from the December kit of 2017 from My Monthly Hero. And I do believe certain aspects of that kit are also available for sale singularly, though I'm not sure about this stencil. Now this one I'm going for the more greener and cool tones for this beautiful black panel. And I'm just going to go across it on the top. And this is the Ice Spruce. I know this is the, all the Distress Oxides I have are from the first series. I still am in the process of buying the second series as well as the third series of these colors. I just haven't got to it yet. Every time I go to the craft store they're always out of the colors that I want, but they have the colors that I already have. So I've been slowly trying to find them. And then the last one is gonna be Cracked Pistachio and the middle was the peeled paint. And you see, even on the black, see how much that color shows up? And then when you activate it with water, it actually gets a little bit brighter. So I'm going to put some speckles and all kinds of fun stuff on this panel. I'm not going to try to add too much water because it, this is a cardstock panel and we do not want it to get overly saturated. I'm just going to quickly heat set it. Go from the back just to get rid of some of the warping. Look how pretty that is. Now for the first panel we made, I'm going to cut out some beautiful little butterfly stencils. I believe they were from Spellbinders. 
as well as a little hello that was from Spellbinders. And I'm just going to go over the edges of the wings and the antennae and around the butterfly's wings with the same colors I used in the cards. So the wilted violet, the fired brick, and the worn lipstick. And I just noticed I had a little spot that was bad on there, but there we go. And you see, still even just blending, the inks show. And they're just beautiful. That's one great thing about the Distress Oxides. The pigment dye uh, combo gives it the spreadability of a dye ink, but also gives it that color ability of a pigment. Because with pigments, you can put it on top of any color and they will show. So it's a great little combo that Tim Holtz came up with that. So kudos for Tim Holtz and Ranger for coming up with this wonderful product. So we are going to adhere our panel on a craft card form. But first I'm going to put it on some foam just to give it a little bit of raise. And apparently I cannot get my foam on there straight. Attach the panel to the card form. And like in the last video, I'm just making note cards. I'm not going to put a sentiment in them only because sometimes you just see a blank note card. Just to say hello to somebody. So I'm going to cut some foam scotch squares and I'm going to cut them in little strips and put just behind the butterfly's body. Because I am going to end up overlapping the butterflies. So there's that butterfly, and there is this butterfly. So I'm also going to add some two-way glue on top of these wings. So when they overlap, they kind of stick to each other. Hold that down so it sticks. Kind of gives the butterflies a 3D kind of jointed effect. And I'm also going to put it on the hello that I dad cut out craft card, craft card stock. Stick that down. Did end up having some of the glue show. But that's no big deal because I'm going to go over this with my Hero Arts lacquer pen. It's very similar to glossy accents. The only thing different is it is in a smaller pen form. That is one thing I really did like about this from Hero Arts is it's a lot narrower and easier to handle when you're writing. So that'll give a little glossy touch to it. Kind of separates it from that. And I'm going to leave it like that because you know what? This is just beautiful. See all the little dots in that panel? It's pretty. All right, so for the second panel, I die cut out a dragonfly and the little matching hearts that come in the wings out of white pearl cardstock. And I am going to stick a panel of foam behind this panel. And this one I'm going to put a little bit more adhesive on only because it warped a little bit when I dried it. And I'm going to stick this over a black cardstock. Still staying very simple, which is fun. And we're going to add a little bit of adhesive to this. I'm going to put some roller on it. And then I think I'm also going to put some of my two way glue just to give it a little extra stick. You don't need much, just a little bit, just to hold it. And I'm going to stick that to the little card form, which I did put on horizontally onto the card form. And I'm going to stick it right in the center. And now I'm going to add some little dots of glue. 
and I'm going to add the little hearts that came from the die cutting the wings. Here's another point of using your negative and positive space in your die cut. Because sometimes you can get some nice little accents from it. Like this one had little hearts in the wings. And it when you pop them out, why waste them? You might as well reuse them and put them on your card. Here. And then I'm also going to put some on the bottom. Now, this alone is really adorable and beautiful, but I think I'm going to dress this up with some more of my little Aurora Borealis gems. So I'm going to take both the three and the four, and these are the transparent gems. That way we have a nice balance of fun shapes and color. And like I said in the last couple of videos about these, they take whatever color you have behind and use it to enhance itself. So the black and the silver will show through on these gems because they are transparent, even though they do have that Aurora Borealis coating on top. Instead of being so bright, they become a little bit duller, which is nice because the silver back, sometimes you get that bright white kind of background. With this, you don't. You get a basic, very clear sparkle. So I'm just going to add them just to embellish this card a little bit and give it some sparkle. I'm going to put some in between the hearts, and I might even embellish. I think I'm going to end up embellishing the dragonfly itself with it, too. Spread them out sort of evenly so they get a nice sparkle all around the dragonfly. I like doing things in threes sometimes because three is a very nice number. Sometimes doing things evenly doesn't look as well as doing it in threes. I don't know why it is, but sometimes I do designs in threes. And there you go. Isn't that very pretty little card? So since this is a black card form, I am going to end up putting a panel of white paper inside it. That way, if someone did want to use this as a note card, they could write a little note in it, as well as sign their name. Because it's very hard to find markers to write in black. And there's that card all together. Isn't that sweet with the sparkle and the little hearts and the pearl dragonfly? Now, now that I showed you stenciling, let's talk about watercoloring with Distress Oxides. Because it's a water-based ink, you can do watercolors with it also. You're going to get a different effect than you get with the Distress inks, only because they've got a chalkier look to it. But it is sometimes a nice little feature, especially if you like that kind of almost vintage -y looking effect. Um, versus the clean cut colors you will get with the stress inks. Because like I said before, when you activate the inks, they actually get a chalkier, almost milky feel. Now, the first one I used was from Unity Stamp. I'll put a link from it down before. And this is the Be Original Elephant one, and I'll also stick a link down there. Um, Unity Stamp Co. is one of my favorites. They make beautiful handcrafted rubber cling mount stamps, and they're awesome. Like I said, I will put a link down below if you're interested in their products. They're a fun group of ladies and one gentleman out of, I believe they're in Minnesota. So very family owned and operated. All right, so. I'm also going to print out a mask for the elephant because I'm going to do a little something cool with him. So here comes the fun part, the
the watercolor mat. So all you're going to do is put some ink on your surface, whether it be your glass mat, craft mat, or like I said in the last video, you can even use a cello wrapper, um, whatever you have that's non-porous, like a glass cutting mat, you know, artist palette, whatever you want to put your ink in or on. And you just add water and you start painting. I did, in fact, speed this up because sometimes painting takes a while. But you see that the effect, you're getting the color, but you're also getting a kind of chalky look to it. So it's kind of like almost a rustic kind of like chalk paint that you see in a lot of chalkboard painting and kind of like vintagey farmhouse look. It's kind of a neat thing to do it with. And the fun thing is, is you can do it on any color of paper and the colors stay true versus when you put watercolor or distress ink on a panel, it kind of takes the color that's behind it because it's got that translucentness. Because it's got that translucentness versus the opaque, almost chalk-like effect you get with the distress oxides. We're almost done here, just adding some more green in there. And that was peeled paint and wilted violet that I used to color this. You kind of get that nice little effect to it. And I'm just going to touch up some more of the green spots I just missed just to fill it in. And there you go. Now, for this one, I did cut out a mask, like I said. Because I'm going to do two things with this. I'm going to blend in this card and then paint. So I'm taking the broken china and I am going to just layer and blend this color right into the background. The good thing about masking paper, and this one's by Inka Dinka Do, is that you can cut it to any shape that you need for your stamp. Though you can do this with post-its, you can do this with, you know, masking fluids, whatever technique works for you. I just use their paper because it's a nice paper and it's easy to cut. I'm also going to water speckle this get that chalky kind of look to it. And there, I removed the mask and you see my surface, my surface is still white. So, we're going to add some ice spruce, some warm lipstick, and some peeled paint. And I'm going to paint the majority of the elephant this ice spruce. And I'm just coloring around the little flowers that are in the stamp. Trying to leave the petals and the leaves empty so that I can add the other colors into it. Just done this grayish color. Now I'm going to wet the green. I'm going to save the paint for last. I initially was going to fill in the dots with the green too, but it blended too well with the ice spruce that you didn't really see it. So I'm going to actually embellish those after we're done. I'm going to do some more lipstick. So far in this video, you've got to see stenciling. Now you're seeing watercoloring and blending, masking. This gives you some great new fun techniques that maybe you've never even thought of using, as well as some of the things that you can actually do to, to make fun cards.
All right, so now that I'm done painting these panels and they're dry, I'm going to adhere them to their cards. Now the first little flower one that I made, I'm going to attach to a white card form and I'm going to add to embellish it some beautiful four millimeter Aurora Borealis lilac jelly gems. I just got them on the store too. I'm just going to add them here and there just to give some sparkle to this card. They are almost exactly the same color as the paint in the flowers, which is really good on my behalf. I'm just going to add them randomly. And like I said, in threes, I don't know why I do things in threes, but I believe it's because. I was taught doing, when you do artistic things, sometimes doing it in threes or an uneven number is more balanced. I don't know why, but it just does seem to balance the cards better. I think that's where I'm going to stop. And there you go, very simple little note card. Like I said, you get that chalky effect on that paper. Now for the elephant card, I'm going to attach it on some craft foam also. And I'm going to make sure I got a lot of adhesive on this because it did warp a little bit with the watercolor in the center. So I just want to make sure it sits right. I'm also putting that on a white card form. And you see, I did a horrible job sticking it. It's a little crooked, but it's all right. I may re end up resticking this to another card form later on. But I am going to embellish this elephant with some three millimeter Aurora Borealis Rainbow Mix that I have available in the store. And I'm also going to add some four millimeter at the end just to balance it out. Currently, right now, the four millimeter is sold out, but I do still have some of the three millimeter left. And these are actually just the perfect size for the little dots in this design because there's little dots like in a trail on this design. And some of them are open and some of them are closed. So I thought, oh, that'd be really nice. And also in the center is some of the flowers. And now I'm going to do some on the little dirt trail that he is kicking up. I fell in love with this elephant. A lot of their stamps are very whimsical. They're very fun. Very inspirational sometimes, which is really nice. Like I said, family owned. They hand bake them, hand press them. And here's where I'm going to bring the formula. I just want to add a little bit to the outside just to give it a little bit more oomph. There we go. There's that little note card. All right, now for the last two cards, we're going to do stamping directly on a panel with distress oxides. So this is the Bloom Kit by Neat and Tangle. And I love it. I put this little sentiment in white. It says, bloom where you are planted.
I want to heat emboss that in the white recollections embossing powder. Now, now that I've got that embossed, I'm going to now add the little the flower flourish that comes in this kit. And this is what I'm going to stamp in the Distress Oxides. So I'm going to be using three colors, the Broken China, Wilted Violet, and Worn Lipstick. And I'm going to do them in a semi-ombre effect. So I'm going to start with the Worn Lipstick. And then come in with my broken china. And you can see how wonderfully the colors of this ink pop out on the paper. And last, of course, is going to be the wilted violet. And you're noticing I'm wiping in between stampings. Because the pigment is a little doesn't seep in as much, it kind of sometimes contaminates your pad. So I would recommend wiping your stamp after you do it just to make sure you don't have any cross contamination. And I'm also going to show you a nice fun thing about the Distress Oxides also. Once I get this last color on there, make sure it's nice and bright for a couple layers. Because it's a pigment, pigment dye based hybrid, it actually stays wet longer. So I'm going to take some clear embossing powder and go over the floral design on both the top and bottom and coat it. I noticed I didn't get so much on the top, so let's do that a little again. That way I get a kind of glossy look to it. I'm going to go over this with a Swiffer just to get the powder tool I did for the embossing off the panel. And I'm going to adhere that to a craft foam panel. Directly on my craft form. Now to embellish this, I'm going to use the same Aurora Borealis Mixed Rainbow Pearls. And I'm going to alternate them between the three and the four, just to give it some detail. Sorry that I have them off screen. I have them laid out on, screen, on top of there. Just so I had more room to show you the card. I'm going to flip this upside down so it's a little easier for me to see and reach. Sometimes that's a hard thing about doing your video. Trying to keep things in frame because sometimes being so far away from your work. Especially with fine details, you have to pull it closer because you can't do it six inches away from your face. Sometimes you need, you can't be a foot away, you've got to be close, but yet you also want to keep it in frame. And it doesn't help when I put my head in the way either because then you still can't see. There you go. And there to that, isn't that pretty? Now for our last card in this series, I'm going to do some random stamping with distress offsets. You see me do this before with other different stamp sets, some of the Hero Arts ones. This is also in the kit from the Entangled the Bloom kit. They're just little random flowers that are added with the kit and little flourishes. So I'm doing this in a rainbow of color. So far I've done Wilted Violet, um, one lipstick now, coming in with Fired Brick. I'm just randomly doing it. And you notice I kind of double up my stamps on my acrylic block because sometimes that saves you a step. 
because then you can just flip over and continue going versus having to reply a stamp to one side constantly. So you just flip it over and you do your next color. Always make use of all sides of your acrylic block. You don't have to just use one side unless it is a kind of block that you can only use it. Now I'm doing this in cracked pistachio. The last color, of course, was the broken china. And I'm just randomly sticking these leaves in this design with the flowers. It's kind of a way to make your own custom paper. It's really fun. Because, I mean, pattern papers are fun, but you can always make your own and make it just the way and colors you want it. So now I'm going to put these wonderful little flourishes on the block. And I'm going to do that in the fossilized amber. Just to add some different color to this panel. And I'm just going over it in random places. Make sure I fill it in all spots that need it so it's balanced. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to heat set that just to get the colors to sit into the paper a little bit more. That way it doesn't smear, put it together. And I'll heat set in the back to stop warping. Now, after that's dried, we're going to add the foam panel to the back of it. And what I'm going to do next is I wanted to die cut the word thanks. In a ombre effect by putting some of the colors I used in the card. So I'm coming in with the cracked pistachio, the fossilized amber now. Now I'm going to do the worn lipstick. Well, broken china. And last, the wilted violet with a little bit of the fire brick, though I don't believe the fire brick is going to make it in the word. I think I went a little too long, which is fine. And now I'm going to die cut that thanks from Spellbinders out, and I'm going to poke it out with my Spellbinders tool in one. And there it is. Isn't that fun? And it goes with all the colors that are in my card panel. So now we're going to assemble this card. And like the other cards, we're going to keep this really simple. I'm just going to attach the panel to the card form. No sentiment inside. And this is on a gray craft card form. Same color as the panel. And I'm just going to cover the thanks in my two-way glue. And I was going to put it on the bottom. I think I'm going to put it in the center just for something different. Now I'm going to put a bunch more of those Aurora Borealis Mixed Rainbow Pearls all over the top of this panel and the bottom just to give it some more detail. There is the top right there. And now I'm going to do the bottom. 
and I'm alternating between the three and the four just to give some dimension to the project. That way they're not all the same size. And I'm also trying to alternate the colors as much as possible also. All right. Now, before I used, before I used my lacquer pen from Hero Arts, and this time I'm gonna do it with the, the glossy accents. And like I said, it's the same kind of product. The only thing different is the bottle is a little bit bigger. It's a little harder to write with, I find, but sometimes it's okay. But the tip in it is very narrow, which is nice. And there's that card. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please click the last uploaded video as well as a video specially curated just for you. And like always, we invite you to like and subscribe, ring bells for notification by clicking this link as well as to sign up for our newsletters where you get crafty sales and video updates.